So now uh, I have the pleasure to to uh, uh, welcome and invite on, on the stage uh, Paul Kruchevsky. Paul uh, is uh, the CEO of uh, Ranch AI, and he will talk about uh, how to use uh, how he using deep learning to teach cameras to read human body language. So welcome, Paul. Thank you, Sasha. Over here, and then I'll click. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, super pleasure. Thank you, uh, Sasha. Thank you, Autodesk, for organizing all this. I don't know if you're aware. I mean, this really is the ground zero of computer graphics in the whole city, this and soft image. We're really here, and it's really cool that the ground zero of, of that is the ground zero of, of, you know, of machine learning. Let's see if this. My, my, myself, uh, I came here. I'm from Alberta. Um, came here for PhD at Montreal. Uh, McGill, years ago, before most people were born, uh, during the AI winter, so I did algorithms instead. Uh, started my first video uh, AI company in 2000 called AI Implant. Uh, back in the day, that was large-scale agent simulation. So how do you simulate thousands of stupid things? Uh, did it for movies, games, and military. Got bought by CAE. Started another company called Grip Entertainment, 2007. How do you how do you do large, uh, small scale simulation of let's say 10 agents, but in highly kinetic environments? I how do you simulate uh, Navy SEAL squads? Uh, bought by Autodesk. Thank you, Autodesk, for that. Uh, took a sabbatical in uh, molecular biology in the UK that exposed me to a scientist and started Wrench. In 2014, four years ago, we started as an image processing company, denoising, sold, sold it to um, Hollywood, built the um, AR, uh, Jedi AR headset for Disney. We did the tech stack for that. The last two years, we've been working on this, what I'm super excited to talk about. So, oh, there we go. So let's flash back. When this building was built, that's Bill Gates, and, you know, there you go. The dream, right? Computers that understand us, not through keyboards, but they hear us. And uh, you know what? It's a great time. Uh, we're building the future, all of us together. I love that. So what if cameras can read human body language? Let's think about that. And I think it's important to really think about the applications first. I know I have a PhD, lots of researchers. We like to tackle problems because they're cool. But at the end of the day, we, you know, we need to build things that, you know, build, build a better world. Simple as that. So my, um, my maternal grandmother, she used to live alone, and uh, every day my, my mother would come visit her and make sure she's okay. And then the one day uh, that she doesn't come to check up on her, she has a stroke. Uh, and she left, she was lying there. That's not my grandmother, and we're not going to go crazy here. But, um, you know, this is important. Society is aging. People want you. How do you balance society aging with the fact that we all want autonomy, right? I want to live in my house as long as possible. I think we all do. That's very normal. That's a great thing about the society we live in. So, you know, how can we, if intelligent assistants are coming, I think it would be amazing if, you know, we can detect if people fall in the house and it calls 911. You know, no one's going to wear this tag around their neck like, ah, I fell, you know. Uh, building on autonomous vehicles. Again, you know, especially in Montreal, it's, it's a little wacky driving in this town. It's a little wacky being a pedestrian in this town. But when it works, let's, let's you know, when it works, there's a constant dialogue between the driver, or hopefully, there's a dialogue between the drivers and the pedestrians, right? As a driver, you should be looking at the pedestrians and watching, are they going to cross or not? You know, and they might be signaling, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm crossing, uh, wait, I'm freaked out. And as a pedestrian, you should be looking at drivers too, but that's, that's a different issue. So it's really important. Right now, you know, the state of the art is effectively a bounding box. You are just a rectangle to that car. That, it just knows that you are, do not kill. That's the level, but we need to interact with cars. I think that's very normal. Um, again, you know, healthier, right? If we can, you know, we, you know, we all work a lot, we're sitting a lot, um, who wouldn't want a personal trainer on a mobile phone, right? Um, also, we're all busy. Who doesn't want to walk into a store and just pick up the stuff and leave? Again, if we can train cameras, we can do this. Um, robots, I really like that from Autodesk. They, they, I think they sponsored this really beautiful vi video once of this artist who's got some kind of mocap system on her body, and he showed it where they're sort of interacting with the robot. I assure you, robots are coming 
They're everywhere, and we need to interact with them in a human way, right? Again, we're right now we're a building box. Why wouldn't you want to be able to interact with a robot high fidelity? Why wouldn't you want to be able to say, hey, come, stop, go around? This, this is all happening. Uh, oh, but the, but the fun thing is, again, one technology is core to all these problems. Um, the, t the science is called human pose estimation. Um, this is Edward, that's Maggie. Maggie used to work at Autodesk. She ran the game engine team. Um, and uh, there we have it. We've got, a, we've got a camera on a phone and it's tracking Edward in real time. So how we do this is a mashup of human pose estimation for the scientists, deep learning, obviously. And I'm gonna really shout that out that in your engineering teams, if your instinct, if especially if you're a manager, if your instinct to solve a problem is not deep learning first, change your instinct. Seriously, do not use heuristics. If you always, 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 if when you're solving any problem, ask yourself, is there data? Can I make data? Can I turn this into a deep learning problem? I, I kid you not, it's really important. Um, this is groundbreaking. I got religion two and a half years ago and I can't stop. But the other interesting thing about this problem is, and, I, and I'll say this very seriously, I think what's unique about Montreal is there's this great mix of, of computer graphics people. I mean, you know, think of, think of what's happened in this building in terms of visual effects. Think of what's happened to Soft Image, Kadera you know, in terms of 3D animation. I'm not even talking about the game side, just the, the fundamental tools. And, you know, I see a lot of computer vision people ignoring computer graphics techniques. I see a lot of computer graphics people, frankly, doing bad computer vision. We are blessed in this city that there are experts in both fields. We need to talk more. And I really love this as a, as a uh, and that's what we do. But again, the, maybe the difference between a research organization where your ultimate deliverable is a paper, we're, we're a startup, uh, you know, um, I put money into this, Mark Cuban put money into this, we need to pay our people, and the only way we pay our people is by shipping so hard and software. So I think it's really important if, 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 to never forget this, software engineering, actually making releases that are QA'd, that's super important. Uh, why is this happening now? I, I, you know, you may or may not be aware. Why is it all of a sudden like, why are we out of AI winter and stuff? And again, I say thank you games industry for this because, well, number one, cameras everywhere, but if it was not for GPUs, GPUs are a peace dividend of the, of, of the console wars. You know, NVIDIA, Sony, Microsoft spent billions of dollars building these beautiful GPUs. And that only became, became possible because of the game industry. And we're lucky. We get to use that for deep learning. So thank you, game industry, for that. But just the alternatives. What we're trying to do is we're trying to allow cameras to understand people. Obviously, there's alternatives. I'm not saying they're bad. You know, you can go all, like, super high fidelity. Is that laser? Oh, look at that. Awesome. Uh, laser, like, clearly, Vicon. You know, that is the state of the art. If you want the best, what's the problem with that? Well, it's really expensive. you got to set it up. Then you got to wear a funny suit, right? That's no funny. Oh, there's Connect. Yeah, I mean, that's a half billion dollar research. It's awesome, but if any of you have built a Connect game, it works um, in your living room with the shades closed and it's big and, oh, you can't buy it anymore. Uh, but, you know, Atomic Labs, great company out of Ontario. And, you know, I mean, they've got, built a very cool sensor that you put on your wrist. I think it's an excellent thing and it's part of the solution for sure. But again, not everyone, there's, there's different times where you don't want to put things on your wrist, so on and so forth. So, I mean, it's not saying uh, leap motion, again, a great sensor, sensors. But software, again, probably because I'm a software person, so I think software is the best. But software is amazing because if, if you get it right, and you've probably seen in your own systems, it's always getting better. Like hardware is fixed in time and space. It's it. It's done. So it's great. Maybe low power. Maybe you can, you know, ship lots of units at low cost. But it's done. It's not going to change. That's the beauty of software. Living and breathing. Um, so I'm just going to go really briefly over the, uh, how this works at a high level. Again, the human pose estimation people in the audience. Um, sorry, but I'm just trying to keep it simple here. Um, how do you... Here's... You know, that's Maggie, that's James, they work, and what's going on? How do we get them to understand that picture? Well, we do it from a bottom-up perspective. We've taught the computer to recognize uh, key points, right? Here's 21, like, no, left, left toe, left ankle, you know, left eye, right ankle. And we've exposed to hundreds of thousands of images of these key points. 
And so what we do is we glue these, th we, we first find all these points in this image. And it's a little like teaching your kid, you know, to read the ABCs. Lots of repetitive, read the same story every night. Um, but from that, we can start to glue. Oh, that was supposed to stitch them together. Anyways, you can glue them into individuals, skeletons. And there's a demo over there. I can run it later. But, you know, James, Maggie, individuals. Uh, there, there. Now we finally got it. But then once you get the skeleton, this bottom up, then you can start to infer gestures. What's really going on in the scene? So here, you know, James is touching his chin. Maggie is holding something, right? Then finally, we can say, well, James is thinking... And because we know the context of the objects in the scene, Maggie's actually filming James with her phone. Now, this is half true right now, half works, but we're on a clear path to solving this problem. So that's what we mean by reading body language. Okay, so really jumping very briefly into the tech stack, you know, 2D out, all this knowledge in segmentation, background segmentation, green screen, effectively. You know, so we kick out 2D skeletons, 3D skeletons, IDs, locations, gestures. Just ram-packed with deep learning everywhere, as I said. We've got, in the pose estimation, we have a 2D pose estimator that gets the whole scene. We have a 3D pose estimator. Here, we're working on a very complex uh, gesture recognition system, an activity recognition system. Uh, Tom's in the audience here, one of our guys. He's working on that. Fortunately, can't tell you much more than that because it's for a client. Uh, but we deploy on TensorRT. We, we, we find really, they've been great. NVIDIA has been great. So if you're not using TensorRT uh, as an inferencing framework, I would consider it. The support's been fantastic uh, for us. But we do have it running on the... Uh, Neural processing engine, that stands for. So training pipeline, again, data, data, data. I hear it. That's, that's all my scientists say every day. Um, we, we have an interesting mix. And again, going back to the game industry. So here, you know, standard databases that are available. We've augmented them to add toes. We've also now, it's the data flywheel. Now that we work on, we work on a lot of projects, we're, we're profitable. We get a whole bunch of data from all kinds of things. We annotate the data ourselves. We have data people in, inside. We generate our own data. But, you know, I see actually one of my old friends, uh, JP, from Mom Mannequin Virtual. I don't know if anyone else from Mom Mannequin Virtual is here. But, you know, we were doing virtual humans in 1998 in Montreal. So we, uh, in this case, we use the Unity game engine. We generate a whole bunch of virtual humans, get beautiful ground truth, pump it in here. Uh, the state of the art. I think for human um, uh, computer vision is a mix. We're not there yet. We don't have the resources that Ubisoft has for photorealistic humans. I, you know, a lot of respect for that. That's hard. I've worked on that. So we've done about an 80, 80% 80 real world and about a 20% synthetic world like that. And um, yeah, and so, yeah, I mean, obviously we're, you know, we want to do all the good things for the world, but let's have fun. This is Montreal. I love this town. We build fun things here. So this, this is what we uh, just showed at South by Southwest. We call it the magic mirror. That's Andre. He's, uh, you know, so basically markerless motion capture and, um, you know, you, you dance in front of it and you're transformed into an avatar. We would have brought it here, uh, but we didn't. So um, there you go. Uh, like everyone, we're hiring like crazy. Uh, come join us. But on the other hand, there's a lot of cool teams here that if they want to use the tech, it's shipping. So we're, we're shipping too. So, you know, shoot me an email. Glad to let you use it. Uh, that's what we built this SDK for. Uh, thank, and there, there's the crew. All right. Thank you very much.